Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. Have you ever wondered how to find M44, the beehive cluster? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing springtime celestial wonder. M44, the beehive cluster, also known as NGC 2632, is an open cluster located in the constellation of Cancer, the crab. At a distance of 577 light years, the Beehive Cluster is a naked eye object, and it has been known about since antiquity. M44 was studied by Galileo and was one of the first objects ever to be viewed through a telescope. At an apparent angular size of 70 arc minutes, or about 1.67 degrees, M44, the Beehive Cluster, is actually very large in the sky. That's over double the size of the full moon. At magnitude 3.46, M44 is bright enough to be observed without the need for a telescope under relatively dark skies. Want a closer look? The stars of this beautiful open cluster resolve into a scattering of celestial gems with a pair of 50 millimeter or larger binoculars or a small telescope. As always, larger diameter optics will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering and the resolving power. With this object, however, it is important to make sure that you keep the focal length of your optics low enough to see the entire object within your field of view. M44 is visible even under light polluted skies. However, dark sky sites provide significantly better views of the fainter stars within this cluster due to the high contrast between the dark sky and the brightness of the object. Step 1. Find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the northeast US, we will start our observations by locating the Big Dipper, an asterism that rises in the northeastern sky in the springtime with its handle pointing downward towards the horizon by March, just after sunset. Throughout April and into May, the Big Dipper continues along its circumpolar path around the North Celestial Pole, until the bowl is completely upside down in the north. Although very well known, the Big Dipper is actually not one of the officially recognized constellations recognized by the International Astronomical Union, the IAU. The Big Dipper, an asterism, is an unofficial yet very helpful grouping of stars that is part of the larger constellation of Ursa Major, the Great Bear. Step 2. Find the object using star hopping. Starting at the Big Dipper, follow the bright stars of the handle down until it meets the bowl, locating the 3.31 magnitude A-class double star Magrez, the faintest star found in the Big Dipper. The name Magrez references the constellation of the Great Bear and comes from the Arabic phrase meaning the root of the bear's tail. Next, moving deeper into the bowl, locate the 2.40 magnitude A-class star Thecta, which means thigh in Arabic. Draw an imaginary line between Magrez and Thecta, and continue on through until you hit the very bright 1.34 magnitude B-class double star Regulus. Regulus is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo the Lion, one of the constellations of the Zodiac. This beautiful blue star shines brightly as the heart of the lion, Leo, and comes from the Latin word meaning the little king. Regulus is the very end of the sickle asterism, which looks like a backwards question mark. Next, go back to the handle of the Big Dipper. Draw an imaginary line along the three stars, Mizar, Alioth, and Magrez, and continue through the bowl past Mirak. As you move past Mirak, you will continue on through the sky for a total angular distance of 45 degrees until you hit the very bright 1.22 magnitude K-class giant star Pollux in the constellation of Gemini, the Twins. Now that we've located both Regulus and Leo and Pollux and Gemini, we're ready to find our deep sky object. Draw another imaginary line between Regulus and Pollux. About halfway between these two stars, you will locate the relatively dim constellation of Cancer the Crab. The main stars of Cancer the Crab form an upside down Y shape. 
Using a Telrad or Red Dot Finder Scope, locate the point about halfway between the 3.93 magnitude K-class star Acellus Australis and the 4.67 magnitude A-class star Acellus Borealis. Move the Telrad over by approximately one degree to the west or right, which is equivalent to the current position of the second ring on the Telrad's reticle. Step three, move your eye to your magnified finder. At this point, you should have M44, the beehive open cluster, in your magnified finder scope. In light polluted skies, M44 should be easily visible in a 50 millimeter or larger finder scope or binoculars it will appear as a beautiful clump of stars. Center M44 in your finder scope. Step four, move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations with your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen the very wide Nagler 26 on a Stellar View SVX 102T Premier Apochromatic Triplet Refractor. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces, centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Short focal length telescopes and long focal length eyepieces work best on this object due to its very large angular size. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M44, want to provide me with feedback on this video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any other questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you from Dave Farina here at CosmosSafari.com. Clear skies.